Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. We start off with the first conversation and we're looking at the fact that this has generated a lot of conversation. You call that a cyber attack on the National Management Identity Commission where you have hackers boasting of gaining access to the database. And we'll be looking at the implication of that security breach on our economy. And this morning we have Sonwolu Timilaye joining the conversation. He is a data and software development strategist. It's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning. It's pleased to be here. I'm pleased to be here. That's all right. Thank you so much, uh, Sonwolu Timilei, for joining the conversation. I start off with you. What, what, uh, what are your reactions when you first saw that news and had the story of the cyber attack on the National Management Identity Commission? I mean, I, I, I mean, I felt a bit disappointed um, that um, that kind of thing could happen. But I mean, I'll say this: when it comes to um, data security, there are various layers to this. We have the policies. We have the privacy policies, we have the privacy policy, data privacy, we have the data protection, I mean, policies, and uh, I mean, um, so many other layers of it, which um, it is not, I mean, I don't believe that there's one way out to um, security, but um, how the security is being managed, so um, how the issue was being managed before that kind of thing would occur. So probably, probably, I mean, I felt really, I really didn't like the fact that it happened, and um, I really like that, that happened, and I really felt very shocked when I heard about the, I mean, the situation. Well, um, I think there's also some clarity, you know, with regards to this. Um, uh, Mr. Timilani, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I was saying that there, there is some clarity that we still need to, um, of course, share with regards to this particular situation with the NIMC. Um, apparently, it seems like the story wasn't entirely true that there was a break um, or that, you know, there was a three million um, uh, NINs that had been uh, breached and all of that. I think, you know, we still need to get clarity with that and we hope that the NIMC puts out an actual message stating what happened. Um, but the conversation really is, you know, understanding how safe data is in, in uh, Nigerian, uh, the hands of the Nigerian government. Um, there's very, very vital information. Uh, that is in uh, you know the hands of the NIMC, um, and so w w when when this broke, there was a lot of people who said, "Oh well, we are not shocked. Um, is the Nigerian government is the NIMC? You know, nothing you know there should be that secure, and it's not you know a shock that anyone can break into it." So, c can you clarify you know for us, you know, if you if you understand um, the levels of security that the Nigerian government puts in place um, with regards data? So, um, when it comes to data security, there are various layers to it. And um, we cannot just look at um, Nigeria as a country and say, maybe, I mean, our security, is not, um, um, our security policies are not properly put in place. But the thing is, um, it is a continuous process um, in ensuring that security is being protected. Now, ACAS and um, ACAS are going to continuously keep trying various technologies, various prints, um, various strategies to ensure they are able to break into, you know, your system. One is your encryption, trying to break into your encryption. Another one is the kind of firewall that is being used, which, I mean, I can't say, and that's why we cannot really still ascertain to now if the NIMC's information were actually revealed and if it was actually properly, if it was actually, um, till now, I'm not sure we've confirmed if they actually got access to those information that actually belong to the NIMC. But the thing is that before an attack like this can occur, there will be um, some preconceived notion. You will see that something like that is about to happen. And sometimes it could be like a breach. It could be caused by a breach in um, um, data policy, in the policies that have been put in place. And um, somebody was actually used to implement them to get out this kind of information. So, I mean, we can't... Uh, we can't we can't generalize um, data protection to just Nigeria alone you know, because you know some of these Nigeria and some of even these servers are not even resident in the country. So the level of security that is being put in place sometimes the level of security that is being put in place sometimes it's not really really um, is 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 not really really um, 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 we we can't really say that we can't really say that it's the Nigerian government per se that controls it like you know like. 
and other things that you know that is being controlled locally. But in terms of our security, in terms of the security that we have in place, I mean, I think we are doing well. Yes, we can still do better, and we can still ensure that the hands that are actually managing it and the kind of policies that have been put in place can be improved on. Okay, but I'd like to find out if there's a possibility that this can happen because uh, I also remember vividly that, you know, the commission uh, leadership had raised some concerns that there were plans to attack, you know, the space. And these were some persons, you know, from maybe Iran, Israel, and what have you, planning, you know, that particular attack at the time. And it was, it was more like the commission was in the know. So is there a possibility that that can happen? And secondly, what are the measures that can be put in place to ensure that, you know, that doesn't happen? Paraventure that happened? Because we know that with every time you have um, all of this incident or report, you would always have an institution or an agency coming to refute all of those claims. So I'd like to find out from you, being an expert in this, you know, field, is there a tendency that that can happen, and what can you know the agency itself do to ensure that that doesn't happen? Yes, um, talking about if it could happen, if yes, it can, it can happen. happen. If it can happen, not if it will happen. I didn't get that. Can you come again? The question is. Is there a possibility that that can happen? Because I'm saying that the leadership of the commission had raised some concerns prior to this time, that there were plans, you know, more like they got a tip off. That attack was going to happen, that some persons were planning to launch an attack on some of, you know, very vital government um, agencies and institution. And so the question is, is there a possibility that this can happen? And if that's the case, what can, the people do? What can government now do to ensure that that doesn't happen? So, um, so when it comes, like I said earlier, when it comes to data security, there are various layers to it, and um, um, there's no one, there's no one, two steps to um, data security, but there are various layers to it, and ensuring that you put various steps in place. Talking about if it can happen, yes, it can happen. Yes, it can happen. If a proper attention is not being paid, to what exactly and the actual bridge that it is in the system. Now, I can't really say for now that, okay, this is how, if it happened, this was how they were able to penetrate this to our system. You know, because our firewall is there, we have, um, I mean, ensuring the cluster of information, the cluster of information that are being sent out, are being pulled out. We have APIs and we have APIs that other top party agencies are using to, you know, that are using to ac access those information from the government and all. But now the, the, the major the major concern the major concern is what is the expertise of the people that are actually managing the server connecting. You know, these informations are actually very private, they're private information, they're information that even if there was a breach in a particular cluster um, of, of our data security that caused the breach, it will they probably will not would like to reveal that to us. But the truth about it is that it can happen and it just depends on how um, 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 how fast? How fast did they see this penetration? How fast did they see that there was a patch that is trying to get into that server? And how fast were they able to respond to it? If the response was if the response time was slow, it will happen. And this is where you know the kind of policies, the kind of policies that have been put in place, comes to play. How 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 how, how well are they monitoring what they have and where is it being monitored? It's, it's a very vital information that can actually determine our response time. To data security breach. All right, um, Mr. Timilei, there's a, a term that I kept seeing yesterday, and that is the S3 bucket. Uh, can you help clarify what exactly that is? Yes, so the thing is that um, the S3 bucket is more like a cluster. It's more like a cluster for information where, you know, um, it's more like a cluster of information. Now, the thing is that you, um, um, when trying to access the information, uh, the information are encrypted, they're encrypted, and they are saved in different layers. So that is actually the S2 bucket is like where the penetration actually occurred. Okay, and, and you know, is that a normal occurrence or was is there, does that show that there was a lapse somewhere, you know, with regards to protecting that bucket? Yes, yes, that shows that there was a lapse somewhere, but as, I mean, I would really not because. Um, yesterday, when I was, um, um, much later yesterday, I, I kept on seeing some information that, I mean, 
the information that were leaked were not actually um they, they were not actually information from NIMC. I guess it was an information from I can't remember at this moment. Yeah. But I mean uh, I mean should in case that occurred, that was a serious break. That was that was that is a serious break that give them access to a lot of information. A lot a, a whole lot of information. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, so go go yeah. ahead and go ahead and share with us. You know what what we what uh, the risks are with regards a breach of that level. Um, what type of information is you know very very likely to be lost or to be you know, taken? So the NIMC has quite a number of information, and um, um, the way the system was built, they built it in a way that I mean they. The, uh, you verify your information to be able to get access to more details. Now, the banks use it, um, verification, um, verification companies use it, um, various agencies have access to this information. So now, this, um, the, the, where the bridge now comes into place is that you have this information, somebody else has my information, I can actually, can actually give out enough information about me. You know, so should in case it's asked, okay, what's the data about of this person? You can see it. What is this? And, and, and with that, he's able to access more information. He's able to access more information, which is actually a very big risk. Aside from that, also, having access to 23 million phone numbers or actually that much access to emails address, you can call them and actually play some pranks on them and be able to get details out of them and be able to get stuff out of them. So, I mean, there, there are lots of things that we don't with it. There, there are lots of things that we don't with that information. Yeah, and, and, you know, we're in 2022 already. I'm sure that uh, information technology is developing uh, really, really fast. Um, is there new levels of internet and data security that uh, we should also maybe be looking towards, um, you know, getting into or, or using? Yeah, um, so, so the thing is that a lot of these data security levels occurred before. But what has been happening lately is that um, applications are developing, a lot of applications are developing, new patches are coming out, new loopholes, new loopholes are getting open. And because of that, that's why whatsoever data security model you have, you have to constantly upgrade it to be able to meet up with the level of technology that is occurring. Because um, if, if, if that's not done, you just, you just, because a lot of times, a lot of times, new threats have been discovered and they are being updated by the day. So, you know, um, um, it's not news again that, I mean, you, whatsoever, whatsoever security, whatever you have, you have to ensure that your domains are, are properly secured. You have to ensure that you have your data encrypted, even do it inside the database, ensuring that those data are encrypted. And if you don't have a certain encryption code, even though you are able to access that information, the information is useless to you because you don't have the encryption code. Other, other, other mediums are ensuring that, you know, when you are pulling out data from the database or, you know, the kind of um, APIs that the NIMC and the others use, when they are pulling out information, they don't get more than the information they need. It also helps data security, ensuring that because if you are pulling out if they are pulling out information from the, I mean, they are pulling out information from the server, and they are being able to pull out more information that you need, it is also always an avenue for penetration. Other thing is, um, like, take for instance, um, um, a lot of websites now use um, social logins. They don't use, um, they don't use logins from within. They don't use logins from within the application just to ensure that they are limiting the amount of information that are penetrating to their database server. And I mean, so many other things, so many other things, which which we just need to just continue to keep working on it, keep our eyes open, keep seeing what the threats are, and keep ensuring that our systems are being upgraded. So some people have also said that, you know, um, collecting data cannot guarantee, you know, the safety of the people. Because first of all, um, the reason for the collection of data over time, the uh, NIN registration was on the premise that it was going to help in the fight against insecurity in Nigeria. And that's on the one hand. On the other hand, some people are also saying that uh, with this, the RICs losing their identity, that people's identity could just be, you know, taken off entirely and then you don't have an identity. How true is this and uh, what are your thoughts? 
I mean, sometimes I, I don't I don't understand I don't understand Nigerian government and I mean the fact that the way we change governments and everybody just comes with a new policy is always is alarming and I know that even for the NMC this is not the first time we're doing this with the national identity card. We're still doing that for the voters card. I I mean I'm always I'm I'm amazed at the fact that we are always taking information and we're always taking this information over and over again. Why don't we just have one system that works? And I mean, my own suggestion, and what I always feel like, and I always ask that we have an immigration system that works. We have an immigration system that has been standard for years. That has been standard for years. And I know that the NMC can have, I mean, could have had with this, but I don't think I've ever had this with our national, with our migration and passport system. Why don't we have a system like this? Why don't we have just one system that takes in all this information and every other person accepts that information from it? So that our security can actually be concentrated into one spot. Our security and all data can be concentrated into one spot. I mean, it's it's but but I mean um talking about um security and getting of data, I, I mean all I feel is that this information should be taken at one spot. Let us focus our security on that one spot, let us ensure that you know it is top-notch. And every other sector, every other prasata are picking those data from it. That's what happens in every other advanced country. So and do, I don't do know you why agree that people that. can lose the identity if this, um, you know, um, claims are really true? People could lose their identity, but I mean, I doubt if the identity can be lost. I doubt if those information can because be lost. Because people can take your, someone that. can decide to take your identity and information and become you, impersonate you. You can't take in my you can't take my fingerprints. Even if you take my I mean you can't take my fingerprints and you cannot have my loop. Why you can't have my loop? Now so the thing is NIMC they don't just work with just the information and the phone numbers they don't. They also work with the passports, they also work with your fingerprints. They also work with your fingerprints. So let's say they are able to break break into the application, they are able to break into the server, they are able to replace my fingerprints. I mean they're able to replace my fingerprints. Now, this person that replaced my fingerprint, does he have fingerprints before now? Does he have an IMC record before now? I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So, I mean, that would create duplicates. That would create the duplication of fingerprints in the database. So the chances are slim. The chances are slim that you can not don't exist because of this kind of bridge has happened. All right. Um... I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, uh, final question um, in one minute, if you can. Does Nigeria have a hacking community? Does Nigeria have an hacking community? Yeah. Yes, Nigeria has an hacking community. But the community is larger than just Nigeria. Nigeria is a small place. The, the communities are larger than Nigeria. Do you get These are communities that, these are communities where people... Teams of hackers work together. Teams of hackers from various parts of the world come together. And sometimes you see Nigerians, you see Nigerians at the top, at the top of those profiles. You see Nigerians at the top of those profiles, probably even doing things that are even much more bigger than even Nigeria security and trying to break into them. And sometimes, I mean, some use it for the neg for negative purposes and some use it for positive purposes. Some people use it to show the bridge in your system so that you can upgrade it. Why some people use it to break into your system and sell your information. So right. Nigeria, I mean, yes, Nigeria has an hacking community, but sometimes it's bigger than Nigeria. Okay. Um, good thing is, you know, every now and then I've heard, uh, you know, people mention that Nigeria's banking sector is one of the most secure in the world, um, and so would you know continue to lean on to that. Uh, uh, narrative. Thank you very much, uh, Songwo Timilane, for joining us this morning, and uh, have a great day ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. So Absolutely. And away from uh, the discussions on hacking and the NIMC, of course, uh, we will give you further details with regards to that story. It seems that it was a false alarm. Um, we're moving away to Mali now, where there's a, a little bit of controversy with uh, ECOWAS and uh, the coup and the um, coup plotters in Mali. We'll talk about that when we come back. Stay with us.